Cassandra Shag, owner of Sip Wine and Beer here in Escondido, California. And this is Wine Versations, where great conversation take place over a bottle of wine. Today's guest is Dr. Stephen Jones, owner of Jones Inclusive, a diversity and training firm that talks about topics that are very important today, given today's political climate. Dr. Stephen Jones, welcome to Wine Versations. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Dr. Jones, yes. I met you a couple years ago. Um, I joined the San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and I was told the president uh, was Dr. Stephen Jones, and I met you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand or get a take of the, the impact you were making in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk about the road. First, the road to Dr. Stephen Jones, and how do you get to the doc? Mm -hmm. The that doc. Happen? The doc. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I uh, grew up in a small town in Louisiana. Um, my parents um, were entrepreneurs. My father ran his own welding company. My mother um, ran a preschool for 35 years. My uncle owned the local grocery store. My aunt owned the local dry cleaners. Wow. So you, you talk about entrepreneurship at a very early, at a time where that might not seem attainable Absolutely. for African-Americans. Absolutely. How, how does that happen? Absolutely. I, I think it was my parents and the adults that I saw in the community talked about how to go from talk to action, how to put things into practice that allowed you to take care of your family and allowed you to take care of the community. And so growing up in that small town in Louisiana, we built homes. We uh, own land. We talked about generational wealth. Wow. Right? And, and, and that was normal. That was normal for where we grew up. And so I always knew that that was possible. Right? And, and I think that's, that's a big part of the, the goal is to, um, I, I've run nine marathons in my life. And I ran and started running marathons because you don't run, I don't run 26.2 right. miles fast. <laughs> and I've only done half. Right? <laughs> I'll tell you I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there you go. There. And I, every race that I ran, I mentally quit three times. I started negotiating. Maybe I won't, maybe, right? Oh, maybe I won't tell people and they won't know. And I'm tired at mile 11 and mile 17 and mile 20. But you're not done. That is very similar, I think, to running a business, starting a business, right? Is that, you know, when you go from idea, you're going to run the marathon, you're going to start your business. You've got to get to mile five first, right, to launch, to get your marketing, to get your business plan, to get your capital, right, to get your, um, your customer base, right? I think many people don't think about the path they think about the end. And when they don't get the end, i.e. their business to be successful quick enough, yes. right, then they give up. My father told me when I was uh, growing up, he said, uh, Stephen, most people will work harder for somebody else than they do for themselves, right? He would say, if, you, if somebody else tells you climb that mountain, you're going to climb that mountain. And when you get tired, you're not going to want to let the other person down, so you're going to keep climbing, climbing. But if a person decides they're going to climb that mountain, when they start climbing, they're going to get tired and go, what was I thinking? Let me get off this mountain. Yep. I set my goal too high, right? Somebody told me once, the problem is not that we set our goals too high. It's that we set our goals too low and we hit them. Wow. Right? And so for me, the goal has always been to make an impact on the world. Right, to make a positive impact and a positive difference. And like my parents and others in the community, to do good and do well. And that's what caused me to launch uh, Jones and Associates initially, that eventually became Jones. And so when I launched my own business, there wasn't a whole lot of fear because I had modeled right in front of me every single day um, African Americans who um, helped the community they did good and did well at the same time. So you talk about launching your own business. You know, as a business owner, that was a hard decision to make. Mm -hmm. You have the elements of fear. Mm -hmm. You have the elements of failure. And, and now I'm hearing that you had that support system. 
So you decide to launch your business, and then what do you do next? Yeah, yeah. Well, one, somebody told me once, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, <laughs> right? And so many people think that when you're working to launch your dreams and your goals, that fear and self-doubt will dissipate. Mm -hmm. And we say, pack it up for the journey, <laughs> right? That it's absolutely about saying, let's focus on what we want to do and take steps to make that happen every day. As a business owner, yes. as, an, as an entrepreneur, um, I can say that there are, are there have been several instances where I just want to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. You're done. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's, mm -hmm. like you said, you're training for that marathon yes. and it's all mental. Yes. And so when you talk about limited resources for people who are trying to get to where, to the next Dr. Mm -hmm. Jones, mm -hmm. what type of work ethic did you have? Yeah. Or what type of work ethic is needed when you're up against trying to cross that line with very limited resources? Yeah, that's so good. First off, I would say that I would say to everyone, be the next version of themselves, not the next version of Dr. Jones, right? Because I'm a work in progress, <laughs> right? Uh, when I was in college, I used to listen to the speeches of Dr. King as I was ironing my clothes, because I'm from the South. You had to have a crease. You had to have a crease. You had to have a crease. And starch. Absolutely. Jeans had to almost stand up by themselves, okay? <laughs> and Dr. one of Dr. King's speeches, he would say, when the doors of opportunity open, we have to burn the midnight oil. We have to be prepared to get up early and stay late. I saw a video that changed my life, and it was 24 hours with Russell Simmons. And I watched as he woke up at 4 a.m., worked out. Mm -hmm. By 10 a.m., he had made 500 phone calls. His day ended by about 11.30, 12 o'clock, right? The idea is that we have to wake up early we have to, in order to achieve extraordinary results, we have to be willing to put in extraordinary effort. Mm. That's right? That's what people don't see. That's you what know, people, people don't see. see. Dr. Jones now. So when I met you, I was like, what does Dr. Jones do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, brother man does it all. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what, is, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Top three words, mm -hmm. diversity, inclusion, and unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. And... You know, we're at 2019. Those are the three words you hear mm -hmm. throughout all of the media streams. Yeah. And people say those words in terms of, I get it. Yeah. But what I'm starting to understand and see, and even hearing you speak mm -hmm. um, during our Martin Luther King breakfast here in San Diego, that there are a lot of people that don't really understand what diversity, inclusion, and unconscious bias is. Yeah. So, yeah. why for Satan educate all us all? Right.